All right, so lesson 24. Now what we're gonna be doing is evaluating logarithmic and exponential equations. So there's like two different two different things we're gonna solve. This one's very, very. if you guys are into algebra, which I think you guys are pretty strong at in general, um, I think you guys will like this one. It's very algebra oriented. So, all right, so, so far um, we have solved for exponential equations two different ways, right? We, we can always do it graphically, right? You got, when you're solving exponent or any um, equations, you can solve it graphically by just figuring out where they intersect. But then the one we did in the exponents uh, part was we rewrote the, the bases, right? Having that common base and then set the, the exponents equal to each other and then just solved, right? So that was the way we've done so far. And then lastly, if you can't rewrite them with the same base, then we have to use logarithms to, to solve for x when it's in the exponent okay so I'll, I'll let you guys th this is just a good thing that i think that you can look back on to remind yourself but i think we'll just actually jump into some of these these questions and i'll show you what we're what we're talking about so if we were going to solve for x in this in this case well we've actually kind of already done this anyway even when we were just talking about like exponential form and logarithmic form we could just rewrite this one in logarithmic form do you guys remember how that works? With the base 2, this would be the same th thing as log base 2 of 64 is equal to x. Yeah? Remember that logs solve for exponents, right? So when we wrote the log, we were really just solving for that exponent. Okay, so you can do it that way. We also, well, so the answer here would just be log base uh, two of 64. What would, well, maybe you don't know offhand, but this, like if we actually solve for this one, this would be two to the power of what is 64? So this would be eight. So we'd say X is equal to eight. And that was just, all we did there was just rewrote it in, X, in logarithmic form and it just kind of worked out that we didn't have to do any algebra there, right? Um, just another way we could have done that, though. We could have done that with uh, making them the same base, right? So we could have written this as 2 to the power of x is equal to, and then instead of 64, I could have written this as 2 to the power of 8. And then set the exponents equal to each other. So then x is equal to 8. 8. Yeah, no, there they. All right, so this one you're probably like from other questions that we've done. You're probably thinking, okay, I know what to do. We can change that twenty-seven into a three to the power of something, right? <clears throat> and that'll work. But what I'm going to do this time, I'm actually going to show you guys how to do this using logarithms instead. Okay, so what we can do is take the log of both sides. So if we take the log of both sides, I'll just show you what happens. So we'll we'll write down all of it. It'll be log. <clears throat> and for now, I'm just going to leave it like as log base 10, right? So I'm just going to leave it as just log of 3 to the power of 2x. And then I'm going to take a lo the log of the other side as well. So then we'll have log of 27 to the power of x minus 4. Okay. Okay. Any ideas now? So th just recognize what the problem is. The problem is that we've got our exponent up in the, or sorry, we've got our x or our variable up in the exponent, right? Any ideas how we can get that exponent down? That's really our issue, right? If we can get it down to the main level, we're good. Yeah, we can put it in front, right? That was one of our log laws. So we should be able to just go, okay, well, let's bring the 2x down there. And let's bring the x minus 4 down there. And then that's kind of most of our problem solved, right? We got it out of the exponent. That's what, this is why we use logs, right? This is our tool to get it out of the exponent. So, okay, we'll rewrite this now as 2x times log base 3 is equal to, and then x minus 4, and put it in brackets, times log 27. All right, now we just have to solve for x, which you're probably still a little confused, right? Because now there's like a, there's logs in there. It makes it a little bit more confusing. 
Um, it's all the same rules that we would normally do with algebra, right? This log 27, don't be intimidated by that. That's just a number, right? If that was like the number three or something, how would you handle it? Well, you would expand it into your brackets, right? We're gonna do the same thing here. So let's expand log 27 into those brackets. So I'll say 2x times log 3 is equal to, and then we'll write this as x times log 27 minus 4 times log 27. Okay. And I think it's worth doing this. I just want to, don't write this down, but I just want to show you why this isn't as confusing as it looks. What we have going on here is just numbers, right? Two times log three times X. This would be the same thing as just a number like four X, right? Something like that is equal to, and then this here, this is just a number times X. So let's pretend that that was like three X. And then all of this, this is just a number, right? This is just a constant term. So this would be like minus seven. Do you guys think you could solve this algebraically? Yeah, so it's not as bad as we think, right? So what would you do here? We would get the three X over to the other side. So we're just gonna do that with, with our logs, right? So we'll bring this one over. So we'll have two X times log base three. And then bringing this one over will be minus X log 27. And then that's equal to negative four log 27. Okay, now if we were dealing with the, the example I just showed there, right? Your next step would be to collect like terms. It's kind of hard to collect like terms when we're dealing with logs. So what we're going to do instead, and this is kind of like the, the, the little trick that everybody forgets here, is we're going to factor out the X, right? Because I want X on its own. So what I'm going to do here is I see that there is an X in both of these. So I'm going to take it out. So we're going to take out X and then we'd be left with two times log base three minus log base 27 and that's equal to negative four log base 27. Phew. All right, we're actually almost there even though it looks confusing still. We need X on its own. What would you do here? Yeah, yeah, divide by all of it, right? This, this is being multiplied by all of that, right? So we're gonna divide both sides by all of that. So in the end, we're gonna have X is equal to negative four log 27 over, and then all of that bottom part. So two log, ba or log three minus log 27. And then you could put all this into your calculator. That'd be fine. And if you did, you'd end up getting 12. So X is equal to 12. So, okay, we did it that way. Do you, if you guys remember, the other way we could have done it was by making, turning that into um, three to the power of three, right? And then make it, which one do you think would be easier? Not the one we did. <laughs> Not the one we did, yeah. So if you can, you wanna use that change of base uh, equation that makes life a lot easier, but this would also work, right? So I'll, I'll leave it at that though. So that's our answer in the end. Um, this one worked out nice. And, and if you put it all in, you actually end up getting the number 12. It won't always work out so nice. And with logarithms, you quite often get irrational numbers. Do you guys remember with like uh, radicals unit, how we'd quite often leave our answer as like two plus the square root of three over four or something. It's going to be the same thing here. Our answers will quite often just look like a mess like that. You just leave it like that. Simplify what you can, but we just leave it with the logs in, in the answer there. Okay. All right, moving on. Okay, let's do one, well, I'm gonna do a bunch more, but another one that's similar to the last one there. Okay, so this is an example though, where there is only two ways to solve this one. We can solve this one graphically because we can always solve it graphically. Um, but our 
similar base, like having the same base uh, method isn't going to work, right? I'm not going to be able to rewrite those with the same base. So if I'm going to, if I'm told to do this algebraically, that means I have to use logarithms, right? That's the only way to do this. So let's do the same as last time, but I'm going to show you guys a little trick this time. Instead of in the last question, I, I just use log base 10 because that's kind of a common log to use. I can use whatever base I want and there's a, we can make life a little bit easier here. If I make it either four or five for my base. And the reason why this is going to be useful is because if I have log base four of four, which I'm going to have in a second, that's one, right? That's going to make my life a lot easier. So let's do that. Let's actually take log base four of both sides. So log base four of X is equal to, and then it has to be the same on both sides. You can't, you can't have different bases. So log base four of five to the power of X minus two. Oh, I wrote that down wrong. Sorry guys. Log base four of four to the power of X. Okay. So same method, right? So that we just need to get those exponents down. That's the whole reason we're using these logs, right? So let's take that X and bring it down and we'll take the X minus two and bring it down. So we've got X. is equal to, oh sorry, it will be in a second, but x times log base 4 of 4 is equal to, and then remember to put this in brackets, right? This will be x minus 2 times log base 4 of 5. So why this one was so helpful is because log base four of four. What's that? One. Okay. So then I pretty much have my answer here now. Well, I guess, no, never mind. I don't yet, but, uh, so that's just one. So I've got X is equal to, and then I'll distribute the log base four of five into that. So we'll have X log base four of five minus two log base four of five. All right, what's our next step? You guys remember? Yeah, X is on the same side, right? So let's bring that one over. So this will be X minus X log base four of five is equal to negative two log base four of five. And then how do I get X on its own here? This is like the new, the new thing. So I've got two X's, right? My problem is which, which one, how do I solve for like two X's, right? I need to combine those into one somehow. Typically that's where you'd combine like terms, but I don't really have that option with that logarithm, right? So factor it out, right? We're going to take that X and we're going to factor it out. So then that's going to become X times, and then remember this will be one now, right? When that one comes out. So that'll be one minus log base four of five is equal to negative two log base four of five. And then we're almost there. Very last thing. I'm just going to divide by all of that, right? So we'll get x is equal to negative 2 log base 4 of 5 over 1 minus log base 4 of 5. So it made it a little simpler, right? But the biggest thing is it just turned that into a 1, right? When we made it log base 4. And yes. Either way though, both will be right. And you guys will be expected. Maybe it's a multiple choice question where you would have to be able to understand like, cause this might be your answer, but if you used a different log, if you would have used like log base 10, your answer would look different, right? But a clue to this would have been when you're looking at your answers that they use the base four, 
right? So you can kind of you can kind of piece that together. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Moving on. Oh yeah, sorry. You leave your answer just like that. Like I know that looks confusing, but just like that. Okay. Let's uh, let's skip D for the sake of time, and we'll do E because it adds a new new little component here. Let's do let's do the same the same thing, right? So we'll go log of both sides and log of all of it, right? So I'm gonna go log. And again, I can choose whatever base I want. I'll choose base two. But I could I could have done three or seven. You know, it would just all look a little different, but they give you the same answer in the end. So I'll say log base two of and then all of it. So this will be two times three x plus four or to the power of x plus four is equal to log base two of seven to the power of x over two. Okay. The new little issue that we're running into is right here. It's with the two, right? I don't really know how to handle that because I can't just take the x plus four and bring it down right now, right? Because it, that's only for if, if it would have been all of this to the power of x plus four, then I could have brought it down. But it's only like one part of it, right? Any, any ideas on how we could handle this? How we could maybe split it up? What about from our last lesson there? What were we doing with those? Uh, do you remember the log, the log laws there? Yeah, let's let's rewrite it, but like split split apart, right? So we could rewrite this now. Since we're multiplying, our log law is that we can write those as separate logs, but addition, right? So we'll rewrite this as log base two of two, which is nice plus log base two of three to the power of x plus four. And then is equal to this. Log base two to the power of seven to the power of x over two. Okay, this is a bit more clear to me now, right? Because now I have a clear path to bring this x plus four down, right? I couldn't do it before, but now I can. So let's just simplify things up a bit. Log base two of two, what's that? One. one, so I can just, that's nice, one. Plus, and then I'll bring this one down in brackets. So that'll be x plus four times log base two of three is equal to, and then I'll bring the x over two down. So x over two times log base two of seven. Okay, same as before, I'm just going to expand that one into there. So this will be one plus x times log base two of three, and then plus Four log base two of three is equal to x over two log base two of seven. Okay, now I need more room. Um, well, again, what we're gonna do, we're gonna get x's on the same side, constants on the other, right? So I'm just gonna do that in one step if you guys are okay with that. So we'll have x times log base two of three, and then bring this one over. So minus x over two, log base two of seven. And then that's equal to uh, negative one, if we bring that one over, and then minus four, log base two of three.
Okay. What's our next step? Factor out the x, right? We gotta get that x out of there. So that'll just be x, start a bracket, and then we're left with log base two of three minus, and now if I factor that out, really all I'm left with there, you could call that as the whole thing over two or just one half log base two of seven. is equal to negative 1 minus 4 log base 2 of 3. Okay, now we just need to write our answer, right? Because it's all over this, right? We'll just divide both sides by all that. So we get x is equal to negative 1 minus 4 log base 2 of 3 over log base two of three minus one half log base two of seven. And believe it or not, that's our final answer. That's as simple as it can get. Okay. Okay, the other half of this now. Um, solving for logarithmic equations. So in this case, it's gonna be like log x minus 2 or something so that now the x is actually trapped in I'll show you some examples it's actually trapped inside like this right like how do I solve for x if it's inside the logarithm right I need to get it out of there so we're gonna kind of just do the other side of this now it's kind of yeah the other side of the same coin okay so again um, yeah look through these are good review but I'll just kind of jump into some um, Okay, one thing, one thing to keep in mind though, with this star, when you're solving for logarithms, we have to compare it to the original domain of the logarithms. So I'll show you what I mean here, but um, yeah, I'll just kind of show you as we get going here. So if we're gonna solve for this one, then what we should do right off the bat is figure out what the allowed values of X are, right? So if I'm looking at this, right? Do, do you guys remember what the domain of just log really base anything, right? Base 10, if you like, of X. Do you guys remember what the domain of that was? Do you remember how that looked? Yep. Yeah. Greater, greater than zero. And that was because they yeah, had the graph looked something like this, right? Where it starts low and then goes off that way, right? So it's gonna be greater than zero. So now you can think about it this way. We've translated this thing, right? This has different stretches and everything else, but either way, the inside of this thing, right, has to be greater than zero. So right off the bat, I can make myself like little equations. I can say, okay, well, I know this. I know that that 5x plus 1 has to be greater than zero, right? The, the, so then I, now I just solve for x, right, to figure out what, what that would be. So solving it like normal, just minus 1 from both sides, minus 1, so... 5, 5x is greater than negative 1, and then divide by 5. So x has to be greater than negative 1 over 5. Okay, but we also want to check the other one. Right, so let's check this side too. So we also will see that x plus 17 has to be greater than 0. So x has to be greater than... Um, negative 17. All right, so I've got two different um, restrictions going on here though, right? If you guys were to, oh, that was weird. If you guys were to combine those, what would my general rule be? What would X have to be greater than? Well, what about like negative 15? Is that okay? Right. Yeah. It's, yeah, I know. It, yeah, yeah, exactly. So as a general rule, then this is our one, right? Like this one's it's already in, included in that, right? So if, if X has to be greater than one over five, then it definitely, yeah, if that makes sense. <laughs> okay. So w whatever we get for an answer here, it just has to be greater than negative 
1 over 5, right? So just check against that. So now here's our method for this. So you can think about it this way, that if you've got like logs on both sides, right, and they're the same log, that you can cancel them. So that's typically what you would do there. But like, why are we able to just cancel those? And here's the reason why. What we're really going to do is we're going to raise both of these to the power of four. We're going to go four to the power of this and four to the power of that. Yeah, because it's the same. It's, the, it's like the same thing as saying, you know, log base four of four. Remember how that was one? Well, it's actually this, like there's another rule that you know, we don't talk about as, as explicitly, but like four to the power of log base four of X is just this. It's just going to be your X. It's like the four and the log base four cancel each other out. Yeah. So that's really what's happening here. But in the end, they cancel, right? Like they, they and, and you end up with just five X plus one is equal to X plus 17. So that's a lot easier, right? So now we'll just get x's to the same side. So we just get 4x um, is equal to 16. So x is equal to 4. So this is the right answer, right? You have to check it against this. Next one here. So, um, okay. So another way you can like this one here, it, it'll work either way, right? I can do my same little method where you could say a to the power of this and then a to the power of this, a to the power of log base a of one over 16. Do you see how like these two would cancel each other out, right? So they, they cancel. So we end up with just one over 16 is equal to a to the power of negative one over four. Okay, so then if I take care of the negative first, I'll just flip this right back up, right? So this would be a to the one over four is equal to 16. So then how do I get rid of that? Well, this is like a fourth root, right? How do I get rid of that fourth root? Yeah, we'd have to go to the power of four, to the power of four on both sides. Does that make sense? You can also, you can think about that as a fourth root and then we have to go to the power of four or I'm multiplying these guys, right? And if I'm going a to the power of one over four to the power of four, if I multiply those, those would be four over four, which would be one. Okay, well that way too, if you like. So anyway, in the end you get whatever that is. A is equal to 65,536. Okay. Now we didn't actually have any restrictions to check that against, did we? Because there was the, the variable wasn't in the log in that case. But just one thing I want you guys to know is too, I did this, this method of like raising like to the power, which I kind of like to do. But in this case, we could have thought about this as just rewriting this in exponential form, right? A, right, A to the power of negative one over four is equal to one over 16. And then we would have done the same thing, right? So you can like think about it two ways, you get the same same result. Yep. Okay, let's do, let's skip down to D here, I think for the sake of time again. All right, so first off, let's figure out what our restrictions are. So for both of these, we could say that, okay, X has to be greater than three. And, and X has to be greater than negative six. So which one does it really have to be greater than? Yeah, three, right? Yeah, so practice those ones. So yeah, it has to be greater than than three is, is kind of the one we're looking at, right? Because that's like, the, that one trumps this one, right? You can think about it that way. Yeah, but just, yeah, yeah, you wouldn't like it. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so now that we know that, 
looking at this one, well, what we have to do on these, we can't just do the same method. I can't go like six to the power of and six to the power of and six to the power of here. That's not gonna work out. What I have to do when you have multiple log expressions like this, we wanna combine them into one. So again, this is where our log laws are gonna come in, right? So do you remember what we do if we're subtracting, if I wanna combine that into a single log? Yeah, we divide, right? So I'm just gonna rewrite this right off the bat as log base six of x over three, or x minus three, sorry, over x plus six is equal to two. Okay, now again, different ways of thinking about it. You could just take this log and put it into exponential form by going six to the power of two is equal to this, right? That, that makes sense. Or the other method is to raise them both to the same, uh, like the same power or same base, right? Raised, <laughs> raising them both. So this would, this could, you could also think of this as like six to the power of log base six of this, and then six to the power of two. Either way, it doesn't matter, right? But, they, but in the end, you've got six to the power of log base six, those like cancel. And we end up with x minus three over x plus six is equal to six to the power of two. Okay. So then I'm gonna bring this side up. So we've got x minus three is equal to 36, just six squared, times x plus six. And then we'll expand the 36 in there. So we've got x minus three is equal to 36 x plus, and then six times 36, 216. Okay, if you just combine our x's, we end up getting 35x is equal to 219. Okay, so then x is equal to negative 219 divided by 35. Okay, so is that our answer? No. How do we know? Because it's less than negative six. Right, so yeah, if you, if you just put that in your calculator, right, you end up getting negative 6.25 dot dot dot, right? So negative six, um, it has to be greater than three, right? Negative six is not greater than three. So this one actually doesn't work. There is no, no solution. This is an extraneous solution. Okay. Okay. So we're going to skip to F. All right. So what do you guys think? What should we do here? What are our problems first, right? It's always like, what are, what are the issues? So the way we've been solving these things, right, is that it'd be like log base three of like, you know, X plus two or something, right, is equal to four. And then we go from there. So in my mind, I'm kind of picturing something like this, right? I want to get it so it's all one log and then a constant on one side, right? So easy enough with the three, I could get that three over to the other side. What do I do with all this if I want this to be one log? Yeah, so we're going to do the um, division thing again. But do you guys see a problem with that yet? Yeah, I don't like the 2 being there right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the 2 back up to the exponent. So here, let's just, we'll write one line with this all simplified. So a little bit more. So this will be log base 3 of x squared 
minus, we'll just write this again, log base 3 of x plus 3. And then I'll get the 3 over to the other side, so is equal to 3. Okay, so now I think it's ready, right? Now we can combine them. So since we're subtracting, our rule we combine is that we divide, right? So we're going to write this as log base 3 of x squared over x plus 3. And that's equal to 3. Okay, so now I'm just going to think about it the other way, right? You can think about it as just changing this into an exponent. This would be the same thing as 3, right? 3 to the power of 3 is equal to all of that. x squared over x plus 3. Okay, so this will end up being 27, right? 3 squared is 27 times x plus 3 is equal to x squared. So then we get 27x plus 81 is equal to x squared. All right, so this should look somewhat familiar. How do we solve these when we've got an x squared term? Yeah, we're going to have to, we'll try the factor. We'll get everything to one side, right? I'm going to keep, keep the x squared term positive, so I'm going to bring these ones over to the other side. So this will be 0 is equal to x squared minus 27x minus 81. Yeah, this one doesn't actually factor. So then if we're doing this algebraically, then yeah, we got to use our quadratic formula now, right? So quadratic formula. So we're going to, or I'll just write it down first. So we've got um, here, a different color. So B Oh, sorry, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That's what x is equal to. Okay, so then we've got x is equal to just 27 plus or minus the square root of negative 27 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 81 all over 2 times 1. Okay, so we end up with x is equal to 27 plus or minus the square root of 1053 all over 2. Okay, so the two answers, if you put these both in just to get like an approximate answer here, you'd get 2. You get x is approximately equal to 29.7 dot 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 because it's it's an irrational number and then you'd also get approximately equal to negative 2.7 dot 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 all right so i should have done this at the beginning are like what is x not allowed to be though right we should have had our restrictions here so from here and here Right? We can say, okay, well, x has to be just greater than 0 from this one, right? And x has to be greater than negative 3. Okay, so x has to be greater than 0. So you guys see, when looking at our two answers there, which one we have to cancel? Yeah, this one, right? So that's not going to work out. So our answer in the end here, our only answer, would finally be written out as x is equal to 27 and then just plus the square root of 
1053 over 2. That's our only solution.